Okay, here in knife fighting, knife fighting, what people don't realize is it's exactly the same as not having a knife, but that can be argumented. But what I mean by that is this, I've seen people get attacked with knives and it's like the person forgot that they're a martial artist and they're just stood there. And it's like they have a, uh, it's like they have a knife and they go to attack somebody and it's like, da, 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 and they're stabbing them repetitively like this and they're saying, you see, nobody can stop that. It's it's because I have a knife, and some people call it a sewing machine attack, and they just come up and say, okay, I'm fighting this guy, I have a knife, and he's trained in martial arts, and he knows, it's like, what are you going to do? It's like, I'm stabbing, I'm stabbing. And it's like, and the guy's not doing nothing. And it's the same thing, it's like, okay, come here for a minute, Raymond, I'll show you. <coughs> stop, stop right there. Raymond's this far away, I have the knife, and he... I come to him, it's like, <laughs> I'm just continually stabbing him. So what they're saying is, there's no defense from that. Now what, what we teach is that even if I don't have a knife, if I don't have a knife, and even my opponent doesn't have a knife, if I'm just far from him, I'm not going to let him come closer to me. Like, this is how we train. It's like if, if you're fighting, if you're in a fight, and somebody comes this close to you, you don't stay there. It's either you're going to attack them or move out of the way. Anybody with half a brain will say, never be in a knife fight. We all know this. You never want to be in a knife fight. The knife's the most dangerous thing, or one of the most dangerous things. I probably have, I don't know, 20 videos probably, just on knife fighting alone that will, people will say, oh, you can't do this and you can't do this. It's like everything you can do, but every situation changes. It's just like saying that I'm not going to kick him in the head from here without leaning backwards. Like, it, I'm not going to stab him from here because I can't reach him. I have to be close enough to reach him. It's no different than in a fight. The other thing is, if somebody does have a knife, what I'd like to demonstrate is, if he has his hands up like this, and I'm this close to them, and I say, okay, you try to block my hand, and, and there's no way that he can block my hand, and it's not because I'm coming so fast. It's because <clears throat> if I have a knife in my hand, it's going to be no different than if I'm empty-handed. It's like, there's no way that you're going to grab my <laughs> If I can touch you, if I say, okay, you grab my hand, and if you grab my hand and, and I'm coming in and out, there's no way you're going to get a, get a hold of my hand to do a wrist lock, an arm bar, or anything else like that. But the thing is, my strikes from this position are just quick in and out. They're like jabs. Now, we don't, if we want to get a hold of somebody, we don't, we, if I come to strike him straight through, it gives him an opportunity because my whole body's coming. But if my body's not coming, my hand's just coming in and out quick, he's not going to be fast enough to get that. So we have a way of, of dealing with what they call the, the sewing machine attack. So if, if my opponent has a knife and he's going to come to sewing machine, it's like, I'm going to come out to take this knife. It's going to come, it doesn't matter. If, if he's coming to the sewing machine, I'm just coming, I'm just coming, keep, keep hitting and hitting, and eventually I'm going to have a hold of it. When I do, it would be the normal techniques that we do to take the knife away from our opponent, or to turn him back around and stick it in, into his neck a few times. People think, here, here's what they do, he comes to stab you with a sewing machine, and they're, ah, and they're repetitively being hit because they're not in the proper mindset. If somebody has a knife and you have the opportunity to get away from them, you take that. If you have a big stick, a chair, or anything that you can put between you and the person with the knife, you use that. If somebody has a knife, and you have to protect your loved ones or children or he's psychotic, he's going to kill everybody in the room, then you have to act a bit differently. And it won't be like him coming to stab me and I'm trying to grab onto it. No, keep, 
the pink guy just like trying to grab onto it. It's like, I'm not going to try to grab onto it. He comes to, uh, it's, a, it's not a, a strike that goes through somebody or comes to kill somebody. It's just quick jabbing, right? He comes to quick jabbing. And I just come in to hit him. I come with a kick. I grab a hold of the arm, separate him from his arm. Whether I break the arm from this or turn it back inside, slice him a few times. That all works. They say you can't get a hold of him. But what I'm saying is, if he didn't have a knife and he came to punch me, it would be the same. I'm just not going to grab a punch in the air and put him into a technique. Even though to learn the techniques, we practice it this way. But the reality of it is, if somebody's coming to kill you, you better get it in your head that you're fighting for your life. You see, with, with or without a weapon, the way that we train is, there are some people, and not just us, I, I just mean people in, in general, there are some people trained that when they come to hit, they come to punch right through what they're hitting, and they're loving it, they're putting everything into it, what they have. Now, the same person who fights that way would lunge with a knife like that. Some people say, well, nobody will ever move like that. Now, if somebody does come to lunge through us, what we do is, uh, if, just drop the knife for a minute, it doesn't matter. As he comes to lunge through, I'm going to move off to the side in a direction, intercepting that, putting myself in a position to take him down. Uh, in this position, we're taking him down. If he had a knife, I take the knife away from him, I level him a few times, give him a few elbows in the head, I break his arm. So there's quite a few things because when he attacked, he extended one lunging force right into it. Now some people say, well, nobody's going to attack like that with a knife. Well, some people want to put that knife through your backbone just might. What we're dealing with here is some people who attack, they're like, they're coming with little uh, snaps. So if you, if you have a knife and you're coming as fast in as, as you're coming out, it doesn't give somebody a chance to to take that. So what we do to counter that is when we're empty handed, I know that, uh, actually Kevin can make for me. If Kevin's coming quick, and I know actually what we were doing before, so like here, if I say, if I'm here and Kevin can touch me, just, just poke me, and no, fast. And so when I go to block, I'm always too slow. So what we do is when he comes, we come. So if, 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 if instead of me trying to think I'm going to go block and do it. He touched me before I blocked it, so somebody stabbed me before I blocked it. First of all, you never want to be this close to somebody with a knife. Never. That's why you go back to the beginning. You make sure that if somebody does come, they have to lunge with enough body. They can't, they have to give you this much time before they can get you, because if they're this close, I don't care who you are, you're going to be stabbed. But let's say, you know, devil's advocate that uh, we were in a bus, or we were in the subway, and we were this close, and all of a sudden somebody pulled out a knife. <clears throat> so, uh, you can grab Kevin right now. <clears throat> Kevin has a knife, and he's going to poke me with that knife. <laughs> and as, as he goes to poke it, uh, quick, as he, as he pokes me with that knife, instead of me trying to grab it and allowing him to punch me, and then we're both fighting for the knife, as <clears throat> soon as he comes to stab me, I'm coming to attack him, and when I attack him, it sets him off for a bit, and I get a hold of it. I can't just go, he goes, I can't just go and grab it, or block it, like this, because he takes it back already. So when he comes, <laughs> when he comes to get me, even if he's getting me, I'm still coming to attack him, because I'm going to take it out away, so he doesn't repetitively stab me. So in my head, when he comes to get me, I'm coming to get him at the same time. I don't have a hold of him yet, but he's grabbing this hand because it distracted him. He's thinking of this hand when I'm in intercepting this hand. So lots of times it's not like somebody just saying that when he comes to grab you, you're grabbing his hand because you won't be there. But what you're doing is when he comes to get you, you're coming to a stab him, or <laughs> you're coming to punch him and intercept this hand and take it across your body to take the knife away from him. Okay, here, if, if you were in a situation, which what I'm saying, never ever to be, like 
if somebody has a knife, you're never going to be this close. Let alone, what like, <clears throat> one of the attacks that people like to put on YouTube and places like that to say, this is how devastating the knife is. Well, the knife is devastating, there's no doubt about that. But what they're showing you is that there's no defense from it, and people challenge you to come up with a defense. The idea here is if he grabs a hold of me and he's repetitively stabbing me like this, it's what people do is there's no way that you can grab it because when he's, he's pulling it back, every time you go to grab it, he's pulling it back. As soon as somebody grabs a hold of you, you, you move. Like you're not, if, even if he grabs a hold of me to stab me, I'm going to come in to punch him. I'm moving it out, out of the way of the stab. I'm not going to move. Like if he comes to get me, and I'm punching him, moving out of the way from the stab. I mean, it's, if, the closer I'm to, to this knife, the closer it comes to hitting me, and the faster it hits me. But if he's coming to hit me, and I'm moving away from this way to punch him, it's going to give me an opportunity to take the knife. I have to worry about this hand, but I also worry about that knife. So whether I want to come in for an elbow to his head, then try to lock up, lock up his arm to take him down, is, is my choice. From here, it's easy for me to take away the knife if I want to. You just bend the wrist out this way, you can't hold on to it anymore. So you can use the knife against him. The idea is, if he's repetitively, I'll let him, he's repetitively stabbing me like this, and every time you're going to grab it, you're too slow. And so, right away, you just come and explode through with everything you got, hitting him, intercepting it. Now, I didn't grab it right away, I blocked it, but after blocking, it allowed me a chance to grab a hold of it because I jarred his head that stopped him for a moment from repetitively pulling the knife back. And this position here, it's, and just like they say, the reality works two ways. It's not like I have the reality to attack ferociously, well the person who's being attacked is just submissively. If somebody grabs a hold of you and they have a knife, you don't even wait for them to have it. You might be trading off, you might be meeting them at the same time. He comes to do this, and I'm coming this way, because this hand is drawing back. But at the same time that this hand is drawing back, he's getting his cage rattled. And in this position here, he wants to continue fighting out, which is going to allow me to take the knife again from this position here, where I can then take him to the ground, take the knife away from him. He can, it's all in a struggle. He's going down, he's trying to take me down. It's all going to go sloppy messy. It's like he, let's say he continues fighting and then we're both like in this position here where I don't have control of the knife, he doesn't have control of the knife, I'm not going to stay here. I'm going to use my knee to crunch onto his groin and I'm going to step away and, and get away as fast as I can because I don't want to be in a position where I'm struggling for a blade because once you are, it's like 50-50 to who's going to get it. See, why I say it's the same uh, with a knife or without a knife is pretty much is the theories and strategies of how we train. So if somebody gets this close to me to grab and punch me, and that's what he's doing, whether he has a knife or not, I would say never ever let anybody get that close to you. If he does, <laughs> we have a thing. If, I, if, I, if I'm in a position and if I feel, if I'm this far and he starts getting closer to me, as soon as he does, I'm just going to attack. Like, that's what I'm going to do. I'm, I'm not going to wait for him. Because I know if somebody's this close to you, they can hit you. <laughs> and, I, and I don't look at myself as super fast, but I do know that if I'm this close, I can be hit. So it's either I hit somebody first, or I move out of the way. It's as simple as that. So, <clears throat> so here, if he's this close and he grabs a hold of me, and I, what I'm doing is, <laughs> to be nice, when I'm doing this, and somebody goes, oh, with a knife, he's stabbing you. But what I'm doing is exploding with my palm strike underneath his chin. What I want to do is his head go back this way, his feet go up this way, and the guy be flattened out on the ground. That's what I want. Because what I'm doing here on the belt is I'm doing this. Like, I'm not just going, I hit him in the chin. I'm going, I'm lifting, leveling his head, so to say, he's still got the knife, but you know what? If his tongue was sticking out, it's gone. <laughs> probably his jaw's going to be broken. He probably got some broken teeth at the same time, because if somebody comes to attack you, you're exploding in with everything you got. Now, the idea is, his attack, since he's doing a sewing machine, doesn't come with everything he's got, because as he's coming forward, he's pretty much coming backwards. 
So it's like somebody who's fast and they're coming with little jabs. And if somebody's coming with jabs, you're always going to be a bit too slow to block them. So what we do with people who jab like that, is it's flow right into them. So if he, if he grabs a hold of me, actually, and he's going to do this, now do it all together. Yeah! I'm exploding right through here. Even though, even if he pulled this back, he's not there anymore. That's what people, people don't realize. It's, you have to. And uh, earlier, like I said, if he was further away, let's see, in, in this position too, and he comes to explode into me, it's like, ah, I'm exploding in with that hand. <laughs> He's covering the cover. He's not even thinking of hitting me anymore because I just put a stop kick on him. I crossed him over and I'm coming to hit him. This hand that had the knife is the one that I want to control, but I'm going to keep leveling him, leveling, leveling. If I do not get control of this knife, I don't care. I'm just going to push him away and run and escape because I do not want to fight with the knife, or fight for the knife. Because if he has, grab onto the knife. If he has a knife, and I come here and I get hit by that knife, my elbow's going to be in this position. I'm still going to come and hit him. I'm cut. I'm probably going to get cut, but I'm not going to be repetitively cut because I'm going to level him up from this position here and drop down and turn that knife back into him. I don't want to be cut. Nobody wants to be cut. But if somebody's there dancing around with little... Little cuts like this, you know, I'll just use the back knife. Little, little, little points like this, and they're just pointing on you and picking, picking away at you. It's the same with if a, if a dog attacks you. If a dog attacks you and you're just running and you're trying to get away, he just keeps biting you and biting you and biting you. If you're unfortunate, he'll get a hold of your femoral artery or he'll get up to your neck. What you want to do is, as soon as he comes, put up a target for him. Drive your arm into the back of his throat as you grab the back of his head and rotate his neck over because you don't want to be danced away like this because the dog's going to continually attack you. If he's continually attacking me and I'm, and I'm thinking I'm going to grab, grab this, I'm never going to grab it. That's, that's what I'll agree with people. First of all, if he wants to attack me, He's going to have to thrust with his full body going through me if he wants to get to me. Because if he doesn't, if he just comes to me and he's pulling it back, he gets me once, but I'm going to keep going. And what I mean by that is, when he comes to get me, if I just come, come and he should, he should stop. But if he, okay, let's say he repeated it, he won't like to get me. Like, I'm, I'm hitting him on the head, hitting him on the head. It's like, th this, this isn't going to work for him, right? That, that's not going to work for him. I'm going to take the knife away. It'll be no different if I have a knife or not have a knife. If I have a knife, since my training is better, he's not going to be doing that to me neither. Because I'm not going to be running forward stabbing him like this. I'm going to do what people think is funny. I'm going to have the knife and I'm going to be closely waiting. It's just like if I was empty handed and, and he's fighting me, I'm, I'm taking my stance and, until he, he draws that line. He comes close enough for me to reach him, for me to attack him. It's no, it's no different. If I have a knife and I'm never going to let him be this close because I know he can hit me. I never want to be here with him a knife in his hand and me holding him on here because he's punching me with his other hand. He's still trying to get me and fight me at the same time. So there are certain things that are just logical training. That if you train long enough, you figure it out. But what gets me is people like to look at points. Everybody has to start from somewhere. You can't learn one defense and think it's going to apply for every situation. Sometimes people are going to slash. Sometimes people are going to stab like a jab with you. Sometimes people are going to explode right through you. It's no different than empty hands. Some people are fast, snappy fighters. 
Some people are earthy fighters that will explode right through you and knock you ten feet back. So it all depends on your understanding and your martial arts training here. But nobody, not, nobody wants to be cut. And you know that if you are in a knife fight, there's a good chance you're going to be cut. But you could minimize how many times you're going to be cut before you got knocked the guy out. Or break his arm. Or reverse the blade on him. Here, what people don't realize is, I, I've seen some people attack, and it's 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 quite a, a mockery for a martial arts training, I guess, because they have somebody attacking, uh, pretty much. I, I'd say Raymond's coming to attack me. Actually, do the one where you grab a hold of me, and I just run back like this, and next thing I'm falling down, and I'm getting stabbed. <coughs> okay, I almost find that. A comical. Some of the things that, that, because the idea is what I'm talking about is if he has a knife and he's this close to me, uh, no, no freaking way that, that I'm going to let him con continue doing that. If somebody's got a knife and they're, and they're this close to you, a lot of people get afraid and I can understand that. And when they get afraid, it, it makes them retract and lose their spirit the warrior spirit to fight because they think, oh no, I'm going to be stabbed by a knife. What I like to, I like to use an old story of mine. When we were kids, we were chasing a squirrel out the school ground and we cornered the squirrel mm -hmm. and there was about three of us and all of a sudden that squirrel came running at us and everybody jumped away and they were scared. Scared of a squirrel because it attacked us ferociously. The idea is when somebody has a knife, it shouldn't be so much of a fear that overcomes your body. You have to have a rage that overcomes your body. Because if you have a fear and it makes you lock up or <clears throat> turtle, you're going to be stabbed more often than if you attack them. Not only that, even for myself, I'd hate to be stabbed 15, 16 times while I'm laying on the ground without ever returning a strike to the other person. So I want to think in my, in my mind that I, if you have a knife, I take it very seriously, I take it as a threat, and I'm going to kill you without a hesitation, no reservation. Now this is only if I don't have an escape. Like, if I can get away, I would be mentally challenged if I let a guy with a knife stand this close to me. I would be... Anybody, I think, with any common sense would say, hey, hey, I don't want any trouble, and they're moving away, making that distance. Because you never want to be this close to somebody. <laughs> it, it, it's just foolishness. So the idea of somebody coming to attack, actually, in, in, we'll do a slow motion thing, because he comes and grabs a hold of me, and he's repetitively, and I'm just going, oh, 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 oh please stop, and as he's <coughs> coming this way over top and under and under like this while I'm falling down and being stabbed. The idea is if we're this, first of all, never ever will I let this happen this close. Like that's just crazy. Because I know that I can touch him without him being able to move from here. So I know he can touch me. So why you move back is it gives you a bit of a space. And if somebody comes close enough, if he comes close enough to me, where, where he's this close, I'm attacking right away. Now, if, if, I'm, if I'm here and he comes to, if, if we're this close and I see this guy with a knife and he's going to get me, I'm going to level him. I'm leveling him with that kick, stopping this. But what you don't realize is that he can go all he wants, but I have control whether you know it or not from here. Because he's just going to drop down this position. He has this knife down here. 
his head is across his own bicep in this position here. It's easy for me to get control of, of his knife from this position. Since I'm kneeling on his head, and I also have control of this arm in this position here. So I will take his own knife and use it against him. Now, we can go over hundreds of different things. It could be small variations every time because there's never any one thing that is definitive. And what happens, happens simultaneously. And when somebody watches a video and goes, well, if you did that, I'd do this or I'd do this. Well, most likely if you were doing something different, I'd be doing this something different too. It doesn't really matter. Uh, Raymond's attacking me with a left hand. If uh, Kevin comes here and he has a right hand, uh, holds on to the knife with, a, with the right hand, it, it makes no difference to me. I don't have the time to switch my body weight and kick him with my rear leg because he's exploding into me. That's why I usually use my front leg. Uh, a long time ago, once I went to kick somebody, and I was wearing work boots at the time, and the knife went right in between the sole of the boot and my foot. It didn't cut me, but it took the knife out of the person's hand. But that's just one of these stories. Uh, I have been stabbed before. I don't like to be stabbed. You have to have a respect for a weapon. And I'd say never ever practice with a live weapon, a sharp weapon, and you never ever want to be in a confrontation. But the big question for most people are, if somebody the repetitively is coming to attack you with a quick jerk in and out, and since they're fast in and out, you don't have a chance to get a hold of the weapon, you don't wait for them to repetitively stab you. Uh, like I said, if they're this close, you move back. If you're cornered, if you're in a bus, on a train, in a subway or something, where there is no room, you might have to act. Now, this person who has a, has a knife and he wants to attack me, he just got kicked. He got kicked. I intercept the knife with my left hand. I'm doing a shooter chop to his carotid artery with this, but they're not little hits like this. These I'm going to hit, I'll just hit him in, in his bicep here from that, because they're like this. When I hit him on his neck, that's how hard I'm hitting him. So when he went to grab onto my shoulder to stab me, I exploded in and I hit him with an inside shooter chop to his carotid artery. He's probably going to buckle down, but I'm not going to stop. Like when we're doing instructional videos, people stop and do this, and then people look at in between and go, oh, I'm going to do this, I'm going to do this, or he's going to repetitively stab you. It's like, no, I'm stabbing him, and I'm knocking him down, I'm taking this knife away from him, myself, so I'm turning it back towards him. I'm going to kneel on his head, but I'm not doing it because he's a nice guy, I don't want to hurt him. But if you have a knife and you're in a real life situation, I'm crushing your, your jaw with my knee, with all the energy that I have, as I'm pulling this up and stabbing that into your kidney. <laughs>